All right, well, the time has finally come for some major shot progress. It's been a while if you've been following along with this uh, build series. I bought this house and it had a, a shop here. The back 16 feet was enclosed, the front 32 feet was open. It was on this slab and the idea was to close it in. And after a long time of trying to get a permit and it just getting more and more complicated to try to close in an older building and bring it up to code, we decided it was really cheaper, easier, quicker to just tear the whole thing down and build a new shop. So that's what we did. It's been a couple days tearing down the old building, saving what we could to go to other projects. And then we got this new building installed and that's pretty much all that's been done up until this point. So it's a 30 by 48 with 16 feet walls. So what we are doing now, the next project on the list is insulation. So we're gonna be closed cell spray foaming the whole building. We're doing three inch thick spray foam. And the idea is to bring it out flush with these beams. So we'll have a kind of a, a flush wall, an even wall. We're also gonna be doing the, there's a fireproof paint. One, it's fireproof. Two, it's a much better finish. It's a finish you can clean as opposed to the bare foam. So with all of that, we're hoping the walls will look decent. We were originally intending on drywalling it. The difficulty with that is we would have to build some sort of framework to attach the drywall to since these beams are as much as five feet on center you couldn't easily attach drywall we would have to build a substructure so as that kind of got more complicated we decided spend a little more money on the spray foam which is more functional have it better insulated and with the finish and everything it should look okay at the end of the day it's a shop i want it to look nice in here but I mean, most of the walls are gonna be covered with shells and stuff and we're gonna hang pegboard up. So that's the idea. Hopefully it turns out good, but first we've gotta get this thing ready. We have to have this completely cleared out before they get here tomorrow. So we gotta start moving some cars around. Ben's taking the old Z06 vet shell. Um, these all run, fortunately, but we just gotta do some shuffling and some moving. That's a lot of junk. Basically turned into storage. I tried really hard to avoid putting stuff in here because I knew it was all gonna have to come back out, but inevitably it just fills up. So now we gotta clean it. So as I said, I was dreading this part of the process a little bit because I knew we had uh, gone against my own rule and started putting a little too much stuff in here. It's just one of those things, man, when you're trying to work out of a two car garage and store a bunch of parts for a bunch of different projects between there and a container, you start to run out of room. So we were gonna have to find places for all this stuff. Now, luckily, Ben was willing to take the old Z06 VET chassis off my hand. So if you watch regularly, you know we switched from this chassis to a steel chassis for our Corvette build. And this thing had just been sitting there and it was the biggest thing we needed to get out of the way. So with that out of the way, we get some of the rest of the cars out of the way and then it's just moving the last bit of stuff. So now we've got to move over the uh, garage hog, the vet project, the current vet chassis. Uh, it's It's been hogging up the whole garage and we've got to cram another car in there. So the car we need to put in here is the Safiro because it is another unfinished project. So things aren't fully sealed up, things aren't finished up. It's just not a car you want to put out in the weather. I hate putting unfinished projects out in the weather because you, you don't know what might be open and, and get water in it, especially here in Florida. So we make enough room, we cram everything we have to in the garage and now the shop is fully emptied out it is uh, as bare as the day it was built. Now, we still need to leaf blow it out and clean up a couple things, but I mean, this is pretty much as empty as this building's ever gonna get ever again, most likely. This is probably as empty as it'll be. So this is our last chance to look at it and look at the, you know, the look of the interior before the spray foam goes in. So with that done, the spray foam guys showed up right on cue and started getting to work. So this is when they went to their lunch break. I popped in here to check it out. So they've got most of the bottom of the walls spray foam. You can see the little mounds of spray foam and that's from them getting the spray settings just right. So trying to figure out the lay pattern. And it's interesting because this stuff lays down pretty warm. Uh, so when you touch it, even an hour or two after it's been laid down, it's still pretty warm to the touch. So, so far it's looking good. And uh, this is at the end of day one. So as you can tell, I mean, they made a lot of progress. They got this project done really quick it's one of those things you don't really know how long it's going to take until they actually get there and start doing it and you don't really think about how much surface area 
needs to be covered until you start looking at it part way through. I mean, between the roof and the walls and everything, it's a it's a lot of surface area to spray with three inches of thick spray foam. So they did a good job taping everything up. We tarped over the lift just so it wouldn't get messed up. You got a couple more mounds there where they tested that and spraying the paint as well. With that, it's uh, time to hold off and uh, wait to see the finished product. All right, well, here is the finished product. A lizard just went behind my siding. I need to open the door, but it's so much nicer in here. It's drier and it's cooler. So yeah, here it is. Um, now, obviously I was hopeful it would lay really smooth and even and look kind of like one complete wall, but I looked into it before. I looked at as many pictures as I could and I couldn't find, you know, like one that was that smooth, um, especially when you started going thicker. If they did one inch and just kind of went over the beams and everything, it would lay pretty smooth. But once you start trying to get to two or three inch, it would always kind of look like this. But um, especially seeing it complete, I'm really happy with it. No, it's not, you know, like a drywalled wall because they have to, you know, spray and then stop. It's real smooth in the middle and then gets a little, you know, a little bit. But as a complete, like as a whole, it looks so much better and it makes this whole building just feel so much more complete inside. One, having the paint, two, having the walls full thickness. That was one of the reasons I wanted to do three inch was just to kind of make it like an even wall up to the beams. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So I had them do gray on the roof. I wanted to do a black roof, but uh, they didn't offer black and since I was getting it painted anyway I figured might as well just do gray at least and if I really want to paint it black down the road I can but if I don't have to and I'm happy with it as it is then it saves me a lot of time and money having to try to paint it up there myself so the idea is just to kind of hide the roof now the gray doesn't do that as well as the black does but it I think it helps but yeah no I mean it, it, it came out really good now we've got to do some stuff so we need to put some insulation on the doors we need to put brush seals um, because those are obviously going to be losing a lot of heat. You can see, you can't really see it with the doors open, but with the front doors, you can see the light just shining in. But yeah, it's spray foamed. I mean, all we're waiting on now is the electric. So I've got the ACs ordered, but we're just, uh, all we got to get is that electrical permit. Well, we've been enjoying the, the spray foam, even though the shop's still basically a big storage unit since we don't have power yet so we haven't really been able to enjoy it that much but it, it has been really interesting you know coming in here different times of days and different days you know really hot days overcast days to feel the difference it is pretty drastic already uh one the temperature difference but two so much less humidity it is far less humid in here if i come in here midday heat of the day and all the doors have been shut it is noticeably drier when you step inside. If you've ever been in Florida, if you live in Florida, you know the humidity is really the big killer. That's what, that's what makes it so miserable to work outside. So I am really excited for that because we don't have any cooling going on in here. We don't have fans circulating here, none of that, and it's still night and day difference. I even took the scissor lift up to the top one day, middle of the day, and it's no warmer up there than it is down here. So really, really happy about that. Uh, now, obviously we have another big update. The big thing we've been waiting on, the electrical permit, we finally, Got it, oh, finally, man, that has been, the, the waiting on permits has been the longest part. If you're ever looking to build something, whether it's a house or a shop or anything, just be prepared for that. I mean, I'm sure it's quicker in other places and slower in other places, but man, it takes a long time to get permits. And that has really been the biggest holdup in this whole process. I mean, it's taken us over a year from the time we committed to doing this, you know, rebuilding the shop putting the new building up to where we are right now and probably seven months of that has been permits. We did have to wait a few months for the building to go up because they were behind on material shortages, but the permitting has been the toughest part and it's the most stressful part because you don't know what's gonna happen. It's outside of your control. There's really nothing you can do about it. So point is, fortunately, we finally got the electrical permit and the electrical has started to go in. So my electrician, Doug, super cool guy. He's been working out here. Uh, so we got the box in. We got conduit running across the top and down to that side. So we'll be able to have 240 volt outlets over there. Uh, it runs down the ceiling here for our lights and such. It's over there to our lift, the light switch over there. You can see it does a really nice job with all the conduit. 
That was one of the reasons we decided to go spray foam was instead of putting the electrical in the walls and then doing a little bit of spray foam and then doing drywall, that would have meant we would have to wait until the electrical was finalized before we even did the, started the spray foam. So it would have delayed this process another few months. So that was part of the reason for doing it this way. And I think it looks great. Uh, I like the way it looks on top and it's really easy to add anything in the future. It's not gonna look out of place. We're not gonna have recessed outlets and then outlets on the wall. So yeah, they've got most of that done. I think most of the conduit is ran. They've been hampered a little bit because I haven't really been able to make up my mind on where I wanna put things yet. Because I mean, keep in mind, there was a wall here for the entire year I worked out of here. So my, I just, I'm having a hard time visualizing where I'm gonna want things to go and it's gonna be hard to tell until I start putting stuff in here. Now, one thing we did figure out is we're gonna put the other lift here. We have another lift, the exact same identical bin pack lift. That's gonna go right next to it. And then we're gonna have some dead space here up until the walls here where everything's gonna be stored up against the wall. So what I wanna do is put my welding table in the middle here somewhere, maybe right here. Um, we're gonna drop an outlet down center and then that way the welding table is kind of floating because if you're welding something, you know, big project, a frame and exhaust, it's nice to have access on all sides. You know, if it's backed up against the wall, it's kind of, it just limits what you can put on it. So that's kind of the rough plan right now. At a minimum, put the welding table in the middle with the welders, have that nice centralized workspace and then everything else on the walls, something like that. So yeah, uh, they're getting most of the way through this. Like I said, panels in, they still gotta run. Uh, the power wire from the house. We are doing 100 amp service off the house since service was already ran out here for the building before it came up uh, right here. This is where I put quick feed in. Uh, so now obviously it's going to come up into this panel. So we're doing 100 amp service. Now it would have been nice to go with uh, dedicated service from the power line, you know, run a meter on this and a meter on the house, but that was going to take a lot longer be a lot more complicated and I just wanted to get it done. So I think the 100 amp service should be plenty since it's just me working in here at most, me and Josue. It's not like we got four people and we're running multiple different high current things. Like we're only gonna be really running one high current thing at a time. So I think it should be fine, it should be plenty. It had 40 amp before and we got by just fine. So. so on top of the electrical going in, we also got our AC units. So I debated on uh, what to do AC wise in this building. I was torn between conventional and mini split. And what really sold me on the mini split is one, the DIY aspect of it. So this is Mr. Cool's DIY series. Super simple. We've got our outside unit. We're gonna put this somewhere outside. We can mount it on the wall. We can put it a bunch of different places. And then we have our inside unit. So we just put that somewhere, wherever we want it, mount this, run power to that. And then it comes with 25 foot lines that are pre-charged that we just hook up, boom, boom, and then we're done. Easy as that, total piece of cake. Uh, the other big thing, probably the, the single biggest thing really was the power draw. So the mini splits are more efficient and they require a lot less startup current and they're quieter overall, which would be nice. So that was a big thing, especially considering that we're running power off the house, which has its own AC unit that draws a lot of current. I wanted to kind of negate some of that here with these. And from what I've seen, the, the mini splits definitely seem to be the way to go for stuff like this. So we have two 36,000 BTU units which should be pretty pretty stout. The, they come with all the fancy smartphone control stuff. They come with a thermostat and you can control them on your smartphone, which will be cool because we can do stuff like, let's say put a smart thermostat in the house and then have it to where, you know, we set it for these to come on a certain time, an hour or two before I'm gonna come out here to kind of pre-cool the place. And at the same time, have it start turning up the AC in the house. Uh, so. There's a lot of cool things we can do. I think this is a really great setup and it's a piece of cake that for me to do myself, I don't have to wait on somebody else to come out here and do their job of installing AC and ducting and all that nonsense. So really, really happy to have these. Uh, we're gonna wait to put these in until we kind of get everything sorted out in here. Uh, but I'm, this is gonna be life changing because again, these are two 36,000 BTU units. Now, mind you, in the garage where we've been working, we have one 12,000 BTU window unit. And this area is about 500 square feet. So it's a third the size of the shop, but it is completely uninsulated. So all of the exterior walls are uninsulated. So this wall's uninsulated, that wall, obviously the door, and that wall, all uninsulated. The only insulated wall would be the wall to the inside of the house. So the garage is essentially completely uninsulated, whereas the shop, we have a lot of insulation. So the R value of center block is like one. 
which is the efficiency rating, right? Uh, the R value of the three inch spray foam is 21. So we're gonna have much better insulation. It is three times the size. We're gonna have six times the AC. Now really the only thing that goes against the shop is the fact that the ceilings are taller. But we're gonna have effectively double the AC per square footage and much better insulation. So my hope is that we can keep it nice and cool in there. I mean, that's the goal. It stays pretty cool in there on a hot day. It's, you, you would like it to be a little cooler, but it's still dra night and day difference from working outside. So if we can get this place down to 75 on a hot day like today, oh man, that's gonna be life-changing. Um, and just having the AC in general, uh, working out of the garage with it has been uh, a real eye-opener to how nice it is to have, not only for the fact of you know, working in a nice cooler environment, but it keeps everything much drier. It's much drier in there. And it's just nice to be able to kind of shut the doors, keep the noise in or keep other noise out. That's another big thing that spray phone's gonna help with. I came in here one day during a pouring rainstorm and it was not loud at all in here. Whereas before, even a light drizzle and you could hardly hear, you know, talking to someone in here because it was so loud. If you've ever been in a metal roof building uh, in the rain, it's, it is noisy. and. We're moving forward, it rains a lot. So that's another thing I didn't even think of, but that the spray foam is going to help with. So oh, I know that was a lot of jibber jabber, but we're getting there, man. We're getting there. Basically, they've got to finish up to the point of the rough inspection, get the rough inspection done, then finalize everything, get the final inspection done, and then we can move on with our lives because nothing else we're doing is going to require a permit. Now, if there's time, which I'm hoping there will be, I would like to get the floors epoxied, especially having the walls all painted nice. The floors just look extra bad. I mean, this concrete is over 20 years old. So uh, that's something I definitely like to do before we move back in because it is definitely one of those projects. If you don't do it before you move in, you'll never do it. Now, no way I'm moving everything back out once we're set up in here to get it done. So hopefully we can get that knocked out too. But in theory, if everything goes smoothly, we should be able to move in here in like a month month or so let's call it a month and a half with doing the fours so uh i'm not gonna get my hopes up yet we still gotta get through this permit process but man we're getting there finally it's been a long road but we're getting there so that being said uh yeah i guess i'm gonna go ahead and end it here hopefully next episode we'll get as uh, much progress done as we did this time and we'll be in here working finally uh, i don't mind the garage the garage has been a great place to work but this is just gonna be so much better so i'm looking forward to it but for now, that's going to be a wrap. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Goodbye, guys.